warmest courtesy of the indefatigable ambassador of the African Union to the United States, who will introduce, who will welcome us, sorry, and later officially launch the book of the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to Her Excellency, Dr. Arikana Chihombori to the podium. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Welcome again, once once again, to your home, uh, the Africa House. My name is Arkana Chiumbari Kwao. I'm your AU ambassador to the United States. To my brother, Dr. Kodjoyanka, uh, congratulations on this amazing piece of work. I haven't, I have maybe a couple of chapters left that I need to read, uh, but from what I've read so far, it is truly, truly amazing read. I think that we are at an era in our history that the truth about us must be told. For far too long, we have been fed lies. Lies that have tremendous, deep, profound implications uh, on our daily lives. I know uh, quite often there's a disconnect between our understanding of who we are uh, and how we got here and what is really, really going on. And I think books like From Jamestown to Jamestown are indeed needed in this day and time in order for us black people to begin to do what we need to do to reclaim our respect as humanity. If the truth be told, I have no idea how we have managed to have been put to sleep for as long as we have been put to sleep. When you look at the status of black people, and particularly Africans <coughs> on the continent, I am baffled every day as to how we have allowed what is going on in our Africa to go on as long as it has. It's stupidity of the highest order. And yet we seem to be oblivious to it. We, I was addressing um, an audience of uh, educators just a few days ago in Cairo during the summit of the African Association of Universities it was brought to my attention that in order for an African professor or to be a, or a, an African educator to be a professor or to be tenured, you have to publish articles that range from 15, in some cases, up to 40. Now take this. None of those articles are reviewed in Africa. You have to publish in outside credible publishers, the Harvards, the Princeton, the Oxfords, I don't know how many others in Europe. The majority of them are going to our former colonizers. They're the ones that are trusted to review your, the African educator's work in order for you to become tenured, in order for you to become a professor. A whole continent that's sitting at 1.27 billion human beings, we can trust ourselves to find educators who can review each other's work in order to become a professor. Now, here's what's even more interesting. They themselves talked about how insane this was. The question then becomes, well, aren't you doing something about it? How come you don't have your own African journals that you can publish in in order to advance to the next level? Why can't you be reviewed by your own peers? I challenged them, I said, do you guys not trust each other? Mm. 
Some of the most intelligent people I know is because we've been put to sleep. And the realization that we've been put to sleep is why we are here today, launching this book that is so timely from Jamestown to Jamestown. An attempt to get us to rise up. An attempt to get us to get out of our slumber and begin to do the right thing for us. Because no more shall we continue to be asleep. 400 years of slavery. 700 years since the first colonizers first set foot on the African soil. 700 years of sleeping like grasshoppers, to echo the words of the president of Uganda, Museveni. How long shall we continue to blame what has been done to us? When shall we say enough is enough, we must take our own destiny in our own hands? Now is the time. I can't thank you enough, Brother Kodi. This book is very timely. And I want and hope that all of you can urge and encourage as many people as possible to read it. Because when we understand what has been done to us, and we're the only ones, by the way, of those who have been abused, have never received reparations. And we just sit back and we take the abuse. Your Africa is getting ready to go. We are at a critical time. With the signing of the African Continental Free Trade Area, Africa is beginning to speak with one voice. The heads of states have set out the platform. But it's going to take you and I being able to now walk the talk. The question is, as you go to that boardroom table, what frame of mind are you in? You see, the most dangerous thing for Africa right now is a colonized mind. You're totally useless and actually dangerous. Stay away from that negotiating table if your mind is not in the right place. So getting to know who you are, where you came from, and how you got here is the first step in that process of unshackling the shackles of the mind. Jamestown to Jamestown is your key to unlock the shackles. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. That was a very inspiring speech, which leaves us in no doubt that this book has value, not just for us here, but for those who are not here and those who would get the chance to read it in due course. Apart from Your Excellency who wrote the foreword to this book, a few people are, were also privileged to read this script and to send reviews. They included Dr. Joseph Silva, an African-American educationist, former Vice President of Clark Atlanta University and later President of Alabama State University from where he retired to become a consultant. He is currently traveling to Ghana with a group of educators to be a part of the year of return. However, Professor Ezra Aharon, I hope I'm pronouncing your name royal, Aharoni or Aharon? Is he here? Yes. Professor Aharon? Yes. Correct, okay. Professor Aharon of Delaware State University has consented to read Dr. Silva's comments. Please welcome Dr. Ezra Aharon to the podium.
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, uh, I want to give all thanks to Ambassador Quile for uh, organizing this special event, and of course, my big brother, Honorable Kojo Yanka, who I've known and worked with for some time, and uh, as just as a brother, he's a gem and a real important person, real important personality to the African experience. So, when he asked me to come to uh, read this tribute to him, uh, I jumped with excitement. And it's my honor and pleasure to be here. Uh, first, I want to say before I read the tribute uh, that uh, Honorable came to our offices at Delaware State uh, roughly about a month ago. And with great enthusiasm, we embraced his work and we immediately understood the importance of it because this mergering of the diaspora with Africa is a critical stage in the expansion of the black, the African experience. This 400 year demarcation that began the transatlantic slave trade in 1619 uh, should give us all pause to reflect upon the lessons learned and the lessons that should be learned. And one of the great things that we should understand is that uh, the interpretation of what we know and what we study. They're so important because uh, people often say that, that um, information is power. If information was power, then everybody would be powerful because like it's like the internet has everything. All you gotta do is go to the internet, the internet has all information. But it's not just information per se, it's what you do with what you know. And Part of our responsibility as an academic institution at Delaware State is to make sure that the interpretations of what students learn and the way they apply what they learn, that those things become exemplary in terms of setting standards in the world. And in merging the African and the diaspora experience, it's timely that uh, Honorable Kojo, Lan Kojo Yanka would write a book like this because it allows us a platform now by which we can create common, advance common ideas and create common initiatives. And so we agreed when Honorable came to our campus that we were going to sign an MOU to merge his African University uh, of Communications with our Department of Communications at Delaware State and our Center for Global Africa. So. We're proud to say today that in advancing the work of from Jamestown to Jamestown, we're creating avenues to make from Jamestown to Jamestown real in the reverse kind of way that's going to give us a new sense of power in the world. So this is just the beginning. It's, it's a book, but now the real assignments begin. You know, how do we get people to read the book? You know, using our collective strengths and resources to ensure that the book receives the proper attention, the readership that it deserves, and that uh, those of us who have the influence to do that get busy to work to make it possible. So, uh, again, I'm honored. And this tribute from Dr. Joseph Silver, uh, I'm going to read now, which it's a great tribute that, that I like very much, and he hits on a lot of great points that are very thought-provoking. It reads as this. Young people of all races are mostly oblivious to the reality of the struggles of African people, historically and contemporarily. They do not know because there has been a conscious effort to eliminate this history and they have been deceived in such a way to suggest that it, the history, never existed. Mr. Yanker, in his book, From Jamestown to Jamestown, Letters to an African Child, has chronicled the true history of Africa and the diaspora during a critical period in a manner that will gain the attention of folk across races, across continents, and across generations. His unique approach to sharing history through letters is sure to create a readership that is more informed about the history 
of African people throughout the diaspora. This is a must-read book which traces the African people from Jamestown, Africa, to Jamestown, Virginia, highlighting their journey and their challenges along the way. In telling this history, Kojo Yanka links the great African luminaries and leaders and the African American luminaries and leaders and their writings to the Bible and other mainstream literature. In doing so, he points out that truth and the contradictions when the various sources are juxtaposed to each other. Only when the truth is told, as is done in this book, will people realize that the first British and the first Chinese were of African descent. The DNA does not lie. What else has been hidden from the world? Read the book and find out. Remember, just as one writer stated, a half-truth is a whole lie. Going forward, the world needs the whole truth. From Jamestown to Jamestown, Letters to an African Child, is an attempt to inspire further inquiry into critical matters that have been shaped by the perspectives of people other than Africans and those of the African diaspora. Joseph H. Silver, PhD, Atlanta, Georgia. from Dr. Silva. I think Delaware State University is like the, the reigning university tonight because we have another professor from Delaware State University to give us a read of the blurb. The blurb was originally written by Professor Kofi Asari Opoku, Professor Emeritus in Africana Studies at the African University College of Communications in Ghana. It is my pride to invite Professor Akwesi Osei from Delaware State University to read the blurb. Jamestown to Jamestown, Letters to an African Child, is a thoughtfully refreshing account of African history that pensively reflects the ancestral wisdom of our African forebears that urges lions to tell their own stories instead of relying on stories that hunters always tell to glorify themselves at the ruinous expense of lions. In a word, Ifokujo, our venerable, venerated, 
older brother tells the lion's tale of African history to a young African and to older ones as well. Aisha, who lives, and it is only when Africans can tell their own stories. Let me repeat that. It is only when Africans can tell their own stories from their perspective that they can amply safeguard their ever abiding consciousness and substantial identity. Centuries of other people's narration of African history has beclouded the truth about Africans and their history. And in this case, the truth about Africans and their history may be said to have become skinny. But the Kenyan proverb sadly affirms, the truth may become skinny, but will never perish. And the truth that was seemingly lost in the morning has started to come home in the evening. In from Jamestown to Jamestown which tells the story of Africa as the cradle of humans and human civilization through the various eras in African history to the present and demonstrating clearly that our truth is undeniably different from the opinions of others. The admirably skillful way in which the author manages to tell the story in the form of letters, manageable doses of life-sustaining historical information, and all in language that is not perceptibly intimidating, should appeal especially to Aisha and her generation. And the value of the information contained in the book may be found in the question, what would become of our children if they possessed the information contained in this book? This is a must reading for Aisha and her contemporaries, as well as their parents and their grandparents. Congratulations, April Cooper. Miss Maud Abdul Kora to read her review. Please, a round of applause for Miss Maud Abdul Kora. Hello, everyone. My name is Maud, and I'm here to read on Mami's behalf. Jamestown. From Jamestown to Jamestown. This book is a must to read. Wow. It was simply insightful and thought provoking. It makes history so easy to read and as a powerful force to reckon with. She's angry at the inhumane treatment meted out to her ancestors, like that of Olauda. Her understanding of religion and Christianity is challenged, and she struggles to reconcile how the Bible was once used to justify slavery and even the apartheid in South Africa. She also reads about slaves in the southern part of America and the insurrection led black man, woman, and child from chattel slavery and every form of oppression. Inviting us to screen their program afterwards. So please, as they have supported us, we should spend some time to support them as well. Let's Africans help Africans. The, the 
crux of what Miss uh, Maud uh, read from Miami tells us that our youth are hungry for knowledge. Not just the knowledge that is available on the internet, but knowledge that is anthropologists, linguists, scholars of religions, seekers of sublime truth, and pupils and students. They will all have an uncommon taste of the African culture, history, language, and religion from the book. More importantly, they will be armed to help liberate the continent of Africa from its poly challenges. Charles Prampe, PhD candidate, University of Cambridge. Thank you. James City County of Virginia invited Honorable Kojoyanka to their office. They had been in contact with him and were aware of the book in progress and have been discussing possible establishment of relations between Jamestown, Ghana and Jamestown, Virginia. Even in, in anticipation of the book coming out, the city surprised Honorable Kojoyanka with a proclamation presented by the Chairman of the Board of Supervisors. To read the pro proclamation, I invite Mr. Ebenezer Apia, who was with Honorable Yanka at the occasion, to come and, and read to us the contents of the proclamation. Ebenezer, please take the floor. to do, but I'm going to do it well nonetheless. Uh, I'm here to um, read the proclamation on, that was given to us on the 18th of uh, June of this month, by the, uh, last month, yeah, last month, by the uh, chairman of the uh, Williamsburg County. And it reads, from Jamestown to Jamestown, honoring our shared histories and United Futures, June 18th. James City County recognizes and celebrates the co connection between Jamestown District in Accra, Ghana, and the historic Jamestown Island in James City County, Virginia. We acknowledge our shared British colonial past and the settlements that have had such profound impact on our communities. Whereas James is located where explorers established the first successful English colony in the New World in 1607. And whereas Jamestown, Ghana, as it came to be known after the erection of James Fort by the British in 1673, and whereas in 2019 marks the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the first Africans brought to Virginia and Jamestown, Ghana, was one of the many locations in West Africa where the slave trade originated. Whereas both Jamestown sites have since recognized and learned from the atrocities of the past, and whereas both Jamestown sets, sorry, sites have now grown to become thriving, vibrant communities that rely heavily on the culture and connectivity grown from those histories and whereas the tourism industry and sense of place of both Jamestown locations is a benefit to the larger cities of Accra and James City County respectively. And whereas Kujoyanka is founder and former president of the African University College of Communications, AUCC, based in Accra, Ghana, he is also a scholar a journalist, author, and former member of parliament and minister of state in the Republic of Ghana. And whereas the Honorable Mr. Yanker is currently working on his next book, From Jamestown to Jamestown, highlighting our shared histories. 
Now therefore, be it resolved that I, Chairman of the Board of Supervisors of Gem City County, Virginia, hereby proclaim the 18th day of June to be and is hereby proclaimed as from Jamestown to Jamestown Day in the county. County of James City and call upon all citizens to join in the observance of this occasion and extend the hand of fellowship and hospitality. In witness thereof, I hereunto set my hand and cause the seal of the County of James City, Virginia to be affixed on this day. Thank you. The book just came out week, a few weeks ago and it's just causing ripples across the nation. This just shows the power of speaking truth and interrupting the accepted narratives of our times. You know what? On the 23rd of this month, the General Assembly of James County is going to do a formal assent to this proclamation and you are invited if you do have time to join the Honorable Yonka in that event. This book is going to set a lot of ripples across the, the world. It has also sealed the unity between two worlds to remind each one of us, African American, Africans, Caribbeans, of the pains and anguish of the past, to heal the wounds and to observe June 18th as a day to honor the proclamation and even more importantly, to celebrate the book from Jamestown to Jamestown. Congratulations, Honorable Kodryanka. Your years of dedicated research and commitment to the cause of uniting the African family has yielded positive results. I remember as a little boy in Ghana, I would watch programs like Inspector Bediakon. That was our version of uh, CSI Miami. You know, our local version of CSI Miami. And those were intriguing stories. And the man behind those stories was Honorable Yanka. We looked up to him when we were young boys and girls. And today we find ourselves lucky for him to even give us a chance to introduce his book. So Honorable Yanka, personally, thank you very much. I believe far beyond your immediate expectations that this book is indeed monumental. After all this, what next? I want to humbly invite one of the foremost advocates of Pan-Africanism in the United States and in Africa to come forward and give his remarks about the book. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite Honorable Melvin Foote to the podium. Thank you, Honorable Yanka. Thank you, Honorable also congratulate uh, Professor Yanka for uh, his outstanding book, uh, Jamestown to Jamestown. I haven't read it yet. I don't want to lie. I haven't read it yet. I proved through it. And I read some of the excerpts from it. And um, it's obviously a heavy piece of literature. So I want to congratulate you uh, uh, for it. I also want to acknowledge my ambassador, Ambassador Chimbori, uh, the AU ambassador to Washington, who probably has single, singly done more anybody else to uh, to try to bridge these gaps between us and among us um, it's a monumental job you know it's a, this is a monumental task and it's of historic significance and uh, so we have to do what we can while we can you know let the ancestors say that we did our best we made our contribution let the ancestors say that let me say that um, I did my DNA uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, what we call a African American. So that meant that my people came here by way of the slave trade. Uh, my, my father and his family out of Mississippi. We talk about the cotton and... Uh, so, uh, my DNA is 40% African American. 20% uh, Ghanaian. And another 10% Nigerian, you know? And so, uh, to a certain extent, 
I'm today at two, you know? <laughs> um, I've, been, I've been working on this diaspora stuff before they called it diaspora. I when I first started talking about diaspora, people said, what, what are they talking about? What are you talking about? But uh, I've always uh, felt I want to work with African people, and something inside me had always spoke up to that. And so I went to the, the Peace Corps when I got out of college, and I was assigned to Ethiopia, uh, Eritrea to be specifically, and that's my And, uh, you know, I didn't know anything about Africa back then. In fact, when they, when, they, when they wrote back to me and said, you've been accepted into the Peace Corps, and you're going to Ethiopia, I thought Ethiopia was in the Middle East, next to Jerusalem, Bethlehem, and Ethiopia, you know? Now, I'm, I'm a graduate from a university. They didn't have any Google back then. You couldn't Google, you know? And so uh, I said, well, I don't want to go to the Middle East. So I went over to the library, found an atlas, and did some research, and found out Ethiopia was in the heart of Africa, you know? Wow. So I graduated from June. In June, I graduated. In July, I was headed to Ethiopia. I really thought Tarzan would be at that airport to meet us. You know, it's a white man, ah, talking to the animals. Uh, the work of my organization is to educate Americans about Africa, to improve cooperation and coordination among various organizations working on African issues. And then we work to shape United States policy toward Africa. We try to influence it in many kind of ways. Uh, so I've been heavily involved on Africa for more than 40 years now. I don't look it. I look like about 30, 35, 40. But I've been working on Africa really my whole entire career. So let me say that um, now, this year, uh, there's a new energy. There's a new level of engagement. Uh, and you, know, you look at our people, and sometimes uh, you got a lot of patience. You have more patience than I got, Ambassador. You have a lot more patience than I got, because you got to love your people to love this work. I mean, you know, I've seen it all. You know, one time a woman pointed me out on a meeting. She said, and he's not even a real African. You know, I thought she was talking about somebody behind me. You know, some white guy. So she said, I wasn't an African. Uh, how can I lead an African organization when I'm not even a real African? And I thought to myself, are you an African because you were born in Africa? There are many, there are many Africans who came here as a 10-year-old from Nigeria. You know, they were in Lagos. They got on an airplane, they came here, you know, and they said, oh, I'm an African because I was born in Africa, you know. Ah, what do you know about Africa, you know? What do you know about Africa? Even though you were born in Africa, what do you know about Africa? Now, you know, here are African Americans. I've been to 40 countries in Africa. You want to speak I'm hard? To Nustin and Gatoch? You know, I can speak their language. I've been to 40 countries in Africa, you know, because share the so is it a matter of being born in Africa or is it a matter of Africa being born in you? You know? That is really an open conversation. Uh, so I continue my work of building a base of support for Africa and the United States. We do it no matter who's in the White House. You know, I try to give Donald Trump some advice. I say, look, they ask me, what do you think the Trump administration could do on Africa? I came up with a concept, they call it Tech Africa. That should have been the bumper sticker. Not prosper Africa, tech Africa. And take all the American technology companies, take them to Africa and connect to the next generation of leaders, all these little kids and young people working at, you know, look to Africa through the use of technology, you know. Now, they, they tell me it's in prosper Africa, but I haven't seen it. I mean, I'm trying to figure out what they want to do. They, they tell me it's in there, but I haven't seen it. Uh, so I work with whoever's in the White House, whether it's Republican or Democrat, it don't matter, you know. Um, I'm trying to even convince Donald Trump that it's not just black people who are from Africa. We all are from Africa. Even you from Africa, Mr. President. You, know, you are an African. You know? So I just really want to say, uh, lend my, my voice and lend my support. Um, I think it's important. There's a lot of good stuff coming out now. There's a lot of good research coming out now. There's a lot more scholars who are focused on it. One of my problems with black Americans, a lot of the academics is, you know, we didn't, we, we, we didn't engage on Africa. You know, we still don't know how to engage. We still don't know how to talk to one another. We still don't know how to love one another. We still don't know what it means to be an African. You know, what does it mean, you know? Um, uh, you know, next month, uh, all the folks are going to Ghana for the big celebration and all that. I'm in the middle of a lot of that. People say, aren't you going to Ghana? I mean, I'm in Africa every day. 
I'm in Africa right now. You know, they're not so much worried. You know, you got to go to Africa. You got to be an African right here. You know, you got to be an African right here. So I just really want to bless you on the book. Thank you very much for your contribution. I'm looking forward to reading it. I'm going to come back to you because I, I said that's how I am. I'm working on my own book also. I started a book, you know, my memoir, if you will. I'm going to talk about some people, you know, I'm going to settle some scores. But I also want to spend a lot of time uh, providing guidance to the next generation of leaders, you know, uh, lessons learned, you know, strategy that we could look at. So they don't have to go back to where I started. Where is Africa? They don't need to go back there, you know. They can start at a whole other point, right? And, um, because I think if we're going to change the paradigm, we really got to be talking about the second graders and the first graders right now, you know. The old heads and all those with uh, gray, gray matter up here, you know, um, you know, uh, our job has got to be to prepare the next generation. That's it. Full stop, you know. And anybody thinking they could just put on a dashiki and go to Africa and do something, whoa, you know. Uh, I advocate just writing a check right now to you know, somebody who's doing something in Africa, you know, be a contributor right now. So I'm looking forward to reading Jamestown to Jamestown. Um, uh, I think it's an exciting book. I think it's a timely book, you know. Uh, I, I'm also excited to, to get scholarship now coming from all over the diaspora. It don't have to be from one angle or another angle. It's coming from all over the diaspora. So I'm excited to, to be a part of this program, and I want to thank you, uh, Honorable Professor, for this uh, contribution uh, to the cause. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Melvin Foote. What you said reminds me of an old story as a kid growing up in Africa that our dads used to tell us said one day a gentleman asked them, in Africa, do you live on trees? And the response was, yes, I live on the tree next to your ambassador's tree. <laughs> it's the ignorance that is pervasive. That, sadly, is ignorance that is among us. The ignorance would be acceptable when it's coming from people who are not us. But when it's coming from within, that is where it hurts a lot. And one of the things that from Jamestown to Jamestown addresses is that unnecessary walls that Africans build against African Americans and Caribbeans. That African Americans build against Africans and Caribbeans. That Caribbeans build against African Americans and Africans. We are one people, and this is the time to do the opposite of what's going on. We do not have to build a wall. We have to break those walls down. Thank you once again, Honorable Foot. The altar appreciates you. Mother Africa is grateful to you for your efforts. Now is the time for me to invite to the stage the brain behind this book of the moment, the visionary the pathfinder who conceived the idea and undertook all the research to make this day possible. Ladies and gentlemen, join me to welcome Honorable Kojo Yanka. Thank you, once again. Thank you, Madam Ambassador. Thank you, Melvin. Thank you, Professor Christian. Say thank you, Hello. And uh, thank you, Kwame. Thank you, Maud. There are four African proverbs that I would like to share with you from the book before I make a few remarks. The first one is, he who knows, teaches. 
and he who does not know learns. The second is, if we stand tall, it is because we stand on the shoulders of many ancestors. The third proverb says, until lions have their historians, tales of hunting will always glorify the hunter. The fourth one, ignorance caused the chicken to go to sleep on an empty stomach standing on a bag of corn. <laughs> Your Excellency, Ambassador Arikana Chiyomboripa, thank you for being a mother to all Africa. I'll tell you something, only yesterday somebody sent me WhatsApp and said, oh, you are going to meet that woman. I wish you were voted the president of the new African Union. <laughs> your Excellency Ambassador, your Honor Melvin Foote, president of the Constituency for Africa, invited guests, dear friends and family. I'm a product of the ideological movement that Kwame Nkrumah established in Ghana in the 1960s. The Ghana Young Pioneers. I was in my teens, eager to learn, anxious to understand the world around me. We were taught extracurricular lessons that inculcated in us the following values. Love of country, discipline and obedience punctuality, protection of state property, unaffectedness, selflessness, and striving to faultlessness. Every moment, I want to look back and take the points one by one, whether these values exist on the continent of Africa love of country, discipline and obedience, punctuality, protection of state property, unaffectedness, selflessness, and striving for, to faultlessness. Today, most of these values are alien to us. But these were values that we were supposed to live with in the new Africa, in the new Ghana being independent. We learned more about the rest of Africa than we were ever taught in our class lessons at the young pioneer level. As for African Americans and other people of African descent, it was only during my university days in the late 60s that I had the opportunity of interacting with most of them. We formed associations like the International Black Alliance at the university to enable us bridge the knowledge gap between us, the Africans on the continent, and those in the diaspora. So why did I write this book? I wrote this book not to win an award. I thought I had a message. I saw it as a moral responsibility to share this knowledge with the rest of the world, to contribute to the liberation of the minds of Africans on the continent and those in the diaspora to give hope to the youth, represented in this book by an African child named Aisha, that they have a civilization and a heritage to be proud of, to correct the misconceptions that have divided us for all this time, and to strengthen our resolve to unite with ourselves to build a formidable United States of Africa. Go to any African country and we are quarreling amongst ourselves. South Africans are chasing Nigerians. Ghanaians are chasing Nigerians. Nigerians are chasing Ghanaians. Our media are criticizing every African leader and the citizens therein. We are competing amongst ourselves while our wealth 
escaped away. Now, if we are commemorating this year as the year of return to the continent, we must use the opportunity to educate ourselves about each other. Jamestown in Accra, Ghana represents all the coastal forts and castles from which captured Africans were dragged against their will across the Atlantic to the Americas and the Caribbean. Jamestown to Jamestown is a long, painful journey of the African whose original civilization was destroyed and replaced with a deliberate program to reduce him or her to an inferior race. But Jamestown to Jamestown is also the weapon to help the African redeem his pride and fight further for racial equality, justice, and freedom. More than that, Jamestown to Jamestown provides the building blocks upon which a solid United States of Africa will be constructed. Once again, let me conclude by reminding us about the Proverbs I quoted. He who must, he who knows must teach. He who does not know must learn. If we should stand tall, we should stand on the shoulders of our ancestors, not on other people's ancestors. Until we tell our own stories, somebody else will tell them with squinted eyes and dictate the meaning of what he has told us to us. And finally, it is because we are ignorant of what we have that we appear hungry when we have abundant natural and human resources on our continent. Before I sit, let me read you just a little bit of what I've written to Aisha. The letters to an African child are letters to Aisha, and you'll find Aisha in the book. But my preliminary letter to Aisha says this, and that's chapter one. If we are going to be masters of our destiny, we must be masters of the ideas that influence that destiny. This is a quotation from John Henry Clark. My dear Aisha, I'm writing you these letters because you represent millions of youth in the world who have a little blood of the African in you. You may be living anywhere on this earth. Some of our, your, your older brothers and sisters are struggling to make a career for themselves. Others cannot understand why. Despite of all their efforts, they cannot even reach their goals and aspirations. Some are languishing in jail. Others are making a living for themselves because they followed a certain path prescribed by their parents, relations, or just guardians. Others didn't have any roadmap, either because they didn't have any, or else they abandoned the ones shown them. Yet others are described or labeled as stars or celebrities because they're shown in the classroom, on, on the sports field, or on the stage. Dear Aisha, some of your peers inspire you because they took some decisions, some very risky ones, to get to where they are. They took initiatives, dare themselves and everybody else, and make life better for themselves. And what does it mean by making life better for oneself? Is it the location where you find yourself? Is it the car, the house, or the vacations you enjoy? Or is it your ability to donate to charities and make a difference in other people's lives? Yet others cannot make ends meet. They have given up hope of rising because somebody has told them they belong to an inferior class and they should be satisfied where they are in life. They have been cowed down with fear from fellow human beings. They have been shown images of the black history because it does not give them any hope or pride. Dear Aisha, you must likely do not know why you find yourself in the geographical location where you are, in South America, in the Caribbean, in Asia, in Africa, in North America, or in Europe. 
speaking a different language from another person of similar color as yours, having a different temperament and a unique outlook on life. You meet a person of the same color as yours and you realize that you have different religions and different faiths. You sometimes greet or do not greet each other because of the orientation or the intuition you have about each other. Otherwise, some kind of education you have received through your parentage, through the classroom, or even through the media, has turned you in the direction of one another or else turned you off and made you suspect or hate each other. Dear Aisha, I'm writing to you because your name resonates in several parts of the world. As soon as you mention your name, they ask you where you come from. Some may even wonder why you are so bold. Tell them you are created by a supreme being to be part of this great universe. You represent the you who do not even know that the black in you defines you as the mother of all inventions, the mother of science and technology, the mother of the arts. You are the mother of world civilization. You are my African child. So ladies and gentlemen, when you get a copy of this book, and I encourage you to get one, enjoy reading the book and share the information. I thank you. Africa needs minds like this. Instead of memorizing Shakespeare, why don't we memorize in Gugiwa Tiongo? <laughs> Instead of learning Chosa, why don't we read Yanka? Instead of immersing ourselves in, in literature and in cultures that have no bearing on who we are. Why don't we spend time reading our philosophers and our writers? Thank you very much, Honorable Kudriyanka. We need more education on every level, on in the continent and in diaspora. I'm just wondering how we can get this book in every classroom in the world, actually, not just us but other people who have to understand us. At this point, they say, whenever something new is in town, we ask the host or the hostess to outdoor it. At this moment, ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular honor, pleasure, and pride to invite the AU Ambassador to the United States of America, Her Excellency, Dr. Arikana Chubambori Powell, to step forward and formally declare Jamestown to Jamestown. A round of applause for him. Well, I was talking to a group of um, diaspora, and we were talking about the African continental free trade area. Some of you may not realize this is something the African heads of states have been working on for 56 years. And it only was launched last week. So I refer to it as the baby being born. It was a 56 year old pregnancy. <laughs> Honorable Kojoyanka, how old is this baby? How, how long was it pregnant? So that is 20 by some stage, 25, 26. This is a 25 year old pregnancy. The baby is finally born. Please. From Jamestown to Jamestown, a story that must be told. More importantly for me, Jamestown to Jamestown resonates to me 
because of what I have experienced living in this country for 41 years and to see how divided we are, Africans on the continent and African Americans in America. Divided simply because we do not understand our stories. We are constantly told your suffering was worse, well, my suffering was worse than yours. That those that were taken across the oceans, they suffered more than the ones that were left behind. It's simply because we don't understand our history. Do you honestly believe those who stole your ancestors from Africa, they left a bed of roses where they took, the, took you from? The answer is no. May I remind you of what they did to the Africans in the Congo. Over 75% of the Congolese were killed by Leopold. May I remind you of what they did in Namibia, where they ordered total, complete annihilation of all an entire tribe. May I remind you what they did in Kenya with the Kikuyus. May I remind you what they did in South Africa during apartheid in Zimbabwe. What they did in Mozambique and in Angola. They did not leave a bed of roses. We are wounded people and we deserve healing. And that healing begins with us understanding that we share a common suffrage. And the sooner we begin to realize that we are in this sinking boat together, the sooner we can begin to seal the holes in the sinking, sinking ship. Because changing sits in a sinking Titanic. It doesn't matter, we're all going down. The plight of black people around the world is the same. Don't you ever let anyone tell you that your suffering was worse. Suffering is suffering, no matter where you encounter it. Jamestown to Jamestown is the beginning of us getting to know each other. The ones who were left on the mainland continent and the ones who were taken away in shackles. But I often like to say, the African Americans who actually made it to the, uh, to the Americas and to the Caribbean, first of all, they took the best of the best. They took the Africans that they believed would make it across the Atlantic. And then even of the best of the best, the bestest of the bestest are the ones who made it. <laughs> are you getting my point? Yeah. So the African Americans and the Caribbeans, I'm sorry, continental Africans, but I'm simply speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're actually defend descendants of some of the best Africa had. They were the best, the strongest, the fittest. So if somebody tries to put you down because you happen to be an African American, remind them of who you are Amen. and where you come from. Amen. But more importantly, that you got here because you were the fittest. You have every reason up on top of the tallest mountain, my fellow brothers and sisters, and claim who you are. I was talking to a white friend of mine, and we were having this deep intellectual conversation about us as humans, and I just like to pop people's brains. And without thinking, I looked at her, it was a, um, a white Caucasian friend, and I said, my girlfriend, do you realize you wouldn't be if it were not for me? And she said, what do you mean? I said, well, don't you know it was a black woman who is the origin of humanity? Mm -hmm. The first human was born by a black woman. And I said, if it were not for black women, all other races wouldn't exist. And she stopped and she looked at me. She said, you know what? I never looked at it that way. Well, because it is the truth. It is sitting right in front of us. <laughs> Just simple fact. It is what it is. Amen. Gemstar is reminding us of who we are. 
and that I often say, the proud, the beautiful, the intelligent, the sophisticated, the highly adaptable, and the total indestructible African. limited hard cover copies which are going to the highest bidders the rest of the books will follow after this the side the sales table is on is outside actually but we'll have them bring it inside payments can be made by check cash PayPal other sheets are also available at this point At this point, I would bring the first book. Fresh, fresh. You just saw him tear the rubble. Fresh. The person who would have the honor of having the first ever hardcover copy can get it for a thousand dollars. Who wants to take my day? a thousand dollars you know I have a story about three standards time treasure talent if you tell me you believe in something I actually gauge you by these three things you either give me your time you give me your treasure or you give me your talent if I don't see any then you're just yapping you're just talking if you believe in the African story and this book as a microcosm of that African story a thousand dollars come on man all right nine hundred dollars nine hundred dollars Come on, we are in the United States of America. Come on. Oh, you don't like me? You want another person to come ask you for the money? You don't like me? Come on. Eight hundred dollars. I know there are some heavy, heavy, heavy hitters in, in this crowd. Come on. You want me to start mentioning names and all that? Come on, eight hundred dollars. Making me shout in vain. Come on, eight hundred dollars. Or do you need a marine to come and tell you? You want to talk to them? The marine was just offered at five hundred dollars. Anybody? Five hundred dollars. I stay at five hundred because people are checking the, the amount in their accounts, so let's give them time. <laughs> Let's give them some time, like two minutes. Five hundred dollars. See, just cut. Come on, man. That was at eight hundred. You cut me down to my pocket. If it sort of says it, then I'll do it. Five hundred dollars. Four hundred. Four hundred. 
300. Let's give a round of applause to the gentleman in pink. Please come up here, please. Oh, come on, give him a round of applause. If you have a song, 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 they would have played some song, 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 song. Thank you so much, sir, for $400. What is your name, sir? Oh, $300. Oh, $300. What's your name, sir? See, Mr. Gazy has broken the stalemate. Uh, $300. Who wants to join Mr. Gazy? Come on. I, I, I see passion in the eyes, but, you know... So we actually have to take the auction upstairs because there are some beautiful people over here who have been so patient with us because they have to come and watch this program. So we have to take the auction upstairs so that they can watch the movie. By the way, the movie they're about to screen is called God Calling. I see Osofia in there, so it must be nice. So please stay and watch uh, the movie if you have the time. But we have to take the auction upstairs. So please. Okay, so you had the ambassador, right? Upstairs and, and then go through the, the, uh, the doors to the side, right? We're going to the foyer, okay? So to continue. But thank you so much. The, the, uh, the next event, thank you so much for your patience. I see a beautiful woman up there. Thank you so much. One Africa.